Hello everyone, this is Zilz and Ziltor, and I'm on Terra Nova. We are about to embark on the Hildebrand Manderville quest lines. But before we get started with that, I just want to make a really quick announcement. Um, from here on out, the the Hilde the Hildebrand Manderville quest lines is going to be the last the last video series that I do. Um, I haven't been making as much progress as, as I want on my on my channel, so I won't be doing as much work as I was before. Um, I'm still going to be doing mainly um, the job quest videos and dungeon videos, but I won't be doing the Heavensward MSQ, and I won't be continuing on the Stormblood MSQ either. So. Enjoy the Hildebrand Manderville quest line with me because this is actually one of my favorite favorite quest lines in the game. And uh, and then we'll see where it takes us. So you s you pick it up in Ulda, Steps of Null, and you're looking for it's from Wymond, and you're looking for the, the rise and fall of gentlemen. Now this quest will not pop up until after you have completed the A Realm Reborn story, uh, main story. So after all the credits and all that, um, then this will pop up. So, the rise and fall of gentlemen. I hear you've been busy as a bee, Tara. Seems half the whispers what come my way relate to your comings and goings. Being the active type you are, I reckon you'd be interested in investigating some queer rumors, am I right? But before that, let me ask, ever heard of a man named Hildebrand? And for this sake, we're going to say no. No. Because Tara, technically, has not heard about him. To hear him tell it, he was Eorzea's greatest and famous inspector. Most famous inspector. Still, I can't say I'm surprised you don't know him. To his credit, uh, Hildebrand and his assistant had a knack for showing up when something shady was afoot. As for sussing out the culprits as well, he had his moments. Well, he had his moments. Though I hesitate to give him sole credit. Any road, five years ago, he gets it in his head that he's cracked the code of Mazea's seventh verse. Dolomo the Calamity, all of it can be stopped, he says, so long as he finds the hero of prophecy. And wouldn't you know it, the hero was Hild Hildebrand himself. So he flies off towards Dalamud. I, that's right, he flew. Launches himself straight into the air somehow, ridiculous as it sounds. Of course, it's only logical that he's got to come back down, though it was only recently that we found his body. Hmm, I had a reason for bringing this up. Alright, so Nashu, Hildebrand's erstwhile assistant, has since become an inspector in her own right. At present, she's investigating the queer rumors I mentioned earlier. She's a sweet lass, a bit daft, but sweet nonetheless. So when I hear she's at wit's end, I want to help. Thing is, I prefer to meddle in the affairs of the living, and zombies are most definitely not my forte. So if you're willing, I'd be grateful if you lent her a hand. As for where to find her, she's like to visit Hildebrand's grave in the lichyard when she's frustrated. Try looking for her there first. Alright, so now we have to go to um, Camp Drybone, because that's where the graveyard is. Tank or heal? Okay, he's still a tank. Alright, so this is where we gotta go. I always get so turned around here.
Oh, if only you were still alive, Inspector. You know how to stop these zombies. Ah, you there. Could it be? Apparently I'm famous. You've come to offer your services to me? Oh, but where are my manners? Allow me to introduce myself. Ahem. My name is Nashu, agent of inquiries. Extraordinary inspector. At least that's what I'm trying to be. But it's not quite as easy as he made it look. Inspector Hildebrand was a great man, a real Eorzean hero. We travel the world, me and him, solving cases and thwarting evil. No matter the mystery, you could always count on the inspector to solve it with grace and style. But then there was the final case, the case of the century, he called it. How to stop the Red Moon from destroying the world. To save us all, he flew into the sky, and all I could do was watch. But then, then he came back down, and he, he... Ooh, flashback. This is all a joke. A big funny joke. Right, Inspector? Any moment now, you'll burst out of the ground and shout, Surprise! Had you fooled, eh? And, and we'll laugh and laugh. Hildebrand Manderville, beloved son. They say... They say no one remembers the warriors of light. Their names, their faces, all gone forever. But I remember you, Inspector. No, gentleman, hero, Hildebrand. No one can remember the warriors of light because they were all deleted. I can never be the hero you were, but I'll do my best to try. So she strips at his graveyard, at his grave, in front of his grave. She's stripping and she's getting dressed. Because that's the appropriate thing to do at someone's gravesite. I, Nashu Inspector Extraordinaire, will carry on your legacy. By stripping and getting dressed at your gravesite. Because, heaven forbid, I go to an actual place to do that. So I told myself, well, not you, the recipe leader, a head zombie who tells the rest what to do. Therefore, all we need to do is kill him. Again, that is. Unfortunately, I don't know where he is or how to find him. But now that you're here, my faithful assistant, you can try the good one or the good one idea I've come up with so far. If you go where these dapper zombies were last seen in southern Thanalon, you might find them. And then you could, um, ah, you could become their friend and ask to meet their leader. Yes, that's sure to work. Alright, so now we have to go to... Okay, so now we have to participate in the fate, Fallen Zombies, Rith and Style, in Southern Fonalin. So, we're gonna head over... Oh, hold on. Let's see which one is the closest. Eh, we'll go to Little Alamigo and take a little ride. So now we have to go to Southern Thanalin and participate in a fate and win the fate. Oops. So this is where the fate is going to be. And I don't know how long we're going to have to wait until it pops up. Stay 
stay as far away from them as humanly possible. Whee! That so tripped me up. You have discovered a fate nearby. Let's see what this one is. Turtles. Eh, might as well go over here. We'll see the other one pop up. Where'd my chocobo go? All trying to sneak off and shit. So, the one thing that I learned um, for bards is how exactly Mage's Ballot works. So, when you activate Mage's Ballot, um, there's a chance that it will, when it procs, that it resets the cooldown for Bloodletter and Reign of Death. You know, pretty rainbow arrows. But the proccing depends is dependent on um, the ticks of your venomous bite and wind bite. Which I did not know. So um, Mage's Ballot is, is supposed to be used for mainly when you want heavy AoE. So to get it to proc often, this is where I find I, where I discovered that bards are kind of screwed in this way. Um, but in order to get it to proc often, you have to... Damn it. I hit the wrong target. You have to spread your your venomous bite and, um, and wind bite to all the mobs in the group. So you have to tab through everything hit mage's ballot and then hope to god everything procs like it should there's no there's no easy way for a bar to spread their dots around like sumner would Serpent seals. Oops. I wonder what my rank is. So yeah, so that's how that's how mages bounce supposed to work for for when for when you want to AOE. 
So, yeah, it's dependent on critical damage over time dealt by venomous bite or wind bite. So, with a group of mobs, you're supposed to spread venomous bite and wind bite on each mob. And then hope your mage is ballot proc so you can get a lot of rain of death down. Alright, well I don't know how long it's going to take for this fate to pop. So we shall return when it does. So, see you in a few. Oh, looky! The fate pop. So basically we just gotta kill all these Gaffer zombies. You are neither a gentleman nor a zombie. I'm sorry. I feel so cultured and so refined. That's funny. I didn't realize these zombies were so smart. A gentleman is rather than does. That comes in fully. We should do it. Yay! Alright, so now we gotta find. Show the document to Nashi where it is she. Camp dry bone. Okay. Alright, so now we gotta go back and meet Nashu at the graveyard. Hopefully this time she'll keep her clothes on. Did you find the zombies? You did. That's wonderful. I've been busy too. The head zombie will rue the day he meets me. You'll see. So tell me, what did you learn? All right, got this curious parchment. Oh, so you weren't able to make new friends. That's a shame. But this parchment, this is a map of the Sagoli Desert. There's a spot marked right here in the south. And look, there's something written here. A gentleman is rather than does. That sort of reminds me of, um, well, no matter. Let's see where this map takes us, assistant. Onward to the Sagoli, which we were not that far from to begin with. Alright, so now we're going to go down to Forgotten Springs. Uh, 
I guess that would help if I mount it up, huh? Alright, so she's all the way down there. Alright, so if you have a phoenix down in your um, inventory, you might want to get rid of it before you turn the quest in. Because if you don't, you won't be able to collect your quest reward and thus you can't complete the quest. You can only have one phoenix down in your inventory at any given time. I learned that the hard way. Alrighty, we found her. I don't think I misread the map. Maybe they're just shy, though. I say we call out to them and let them know we come in peace. And when the leader shows himself, we strike. So, let's see. I will go wither the wild rose blooms. No. A gentleman is rather than does. Show yourselves, foul fiends. Nothing. Let's do a gentleman is rather than does. That seems to be their motto. Who summons the the gentle dead men? This should totally be a playable race. Wouldn't it be funny the warrior of light would be a zombie? They live, they live, and we we hunger. My brothers, lend me your ears. A gentleman does not dine upon his guests. That's a screenshot in the making. Spare these two fair ladies your mastications. Withdraw, I say, and harass them no more. Up in the sky, look, it's a bird. No, it's an airship. No, it's the inspector. He's not Superman here. We hear and we obey. And they run off. It is you. It really is you. I knew nothing could kill the great inspector Hildebrand. Hildebrand? Who is this Hildebrand of whom you speak? My name is Zombie Brand, devourer of brains, undead overlord extraordinaire. Zombie Brand. <laughs> what are you saying? You're not an undead overlord, you're a gentleman inspector. Inspector, overlord, inspector, overlord. Oh, Inspector, you're just confused is all. Don't worry, I'll knock some sense back into that noggin of yours. Stay your hand, my lady. You know not what you do. <laughs> Even if I were the esteemed gentleman you purport me to be, the concussive force of the boss is more like to liquefy my... If crash into the ground made you forget, then an explosion of equal force ought to make you remember. I'll save you, Inspector, or kill you trying. Well, at least she's got some pizzazz to her. See, even you acknowledge the possibility that this plan will result in my... Death. Normally, I would applaud your, ingenu your ingenuity, Nashu, but I would have preferred that you found a more elegant solution. Now he's perturbed. 
Ha! He remembers me. Inspector Hildebrand remembers me. Yes, yes, I remember you, my faithful assistant. What I do not quite remember is how I came to be here. I guess we'll find out. Because that's not creepy. Ah, <laughs> uh, such a wonderful dream. I slew a dragon and... What is this place? And for that matter, who am I? Like, wait a second. All they all thought he was a zombie, too. So, how did they get to be zombies? I, Hildebrand, agent of inquiry and in inspector extraordinaire, have awoken at last. I always knew you'd come back to us. Be it Red Moon or Black Dragon, no fiend is a match for my legendary might. And who might this fine lady be? Hmm? Could she perhaps be one of my many admirers? Oh, but what is this faint tingling sensation in my arm? This ringing in my ears? This dizziness? Could it be a case? Yeah. But what kind of case would it be? Okay, back in the saddle. Barely, it could not, or it could be not else. Somewhere nearby, dastardly doings are afoot, and only I can thwart them. Copious quantities of sand, unbearable heat. Aha! The Sigoli Desert. I bet my life on it. But it's nighttime. It shouldn't really be all that hot. Which means Ulda is but a short trek away. Yes, it all fits. Only that den of iniquity could so violently triggered my keen investigator sense. Fear not, law-abiding citizens. Inspector Hildebrand shall soon deliver you from evil. Hooray. So where are we going? Alright, so question the residents of Ulda on the steps of Null. So we gotta go all the way back to Ulda. Here we go.
beg your pardon, you wish to question me as to the whereabouts of that deviant running around town dressed in rags? Do I look like a reporter of the mithril eye? I do not consort with perverts. Ah, I called him a pervert. Poor guy. He's just a weirdo. What? You're looking for a half-naked Highlander? What likes to catch criminals? I think I remember a thing like that. If you do manage to find this inspector friend of yours, tell him to do something about that god's damn duelist. Me mate's pa's cousin's kid's best friend lost his blade the other day to that bastard. That's like... Bunch of people they know. Oh, wrong way. I guess it's in here. Oh, there we go. Hmm, sorry lass, but if it's information you want, you'd be served best by going to Wyman. The only rumors I've heard are those about the weapon thief. Calls himself a duelist, or so I hear, but when you don't allow your opponents to refuse, well... Alright, so now we gotta go talk to... Wyman. I take it you've dealt with that zombie problem, eh? So, do tell. Just why were they dressing up like dandies? Wyman! Hey, Wyman! Thou almighty bugger me with the bleeding spear. The dead have risen and they're walking the streets of Ulda. <laughs> no need for melodrama, my good man. As you can see, reports of my death were greatly exaggerated. It's true, he's not a zombie, I checked. That's nice to know. Aye, you do seem to be hale and healthy, which uh, begs the question, how in the seven hells did you survive that fall? Why question divine providence? What matters is that Aeorius' champion has returned, and that he, and by that I mean I, shall bring the steaming duelist to justice. Heard about that, did you? Might be harder than you think. I've got no inkling of that fellow's current whereabouts. Inconceivable. I refuse to believe that ever inquisitive, ever ambitious, ever reliable Wyman is without a single shred of information, even one of dubious relevance. Hmm, well, I make no promises, mind you, but there was some talk of a fair maiden what said her most. This knave assaulted a young woman as well. The audacity. I shall fly to her side at... Gasp. Why, even is it the lady from the Sigoli? Well, where, what? A serendipitous encounter indeed. Unless you too seek the belligerent duelist. Capital. It will be invigorating to engage in a friendly battle of wits. Already the spirit of competition fills me. Come, Nashu, we must away. I look so tan after being in the desert. Damn it, Hildy, I ain't told you the lass's name yet. Oh, for these quests, if you notice, we're not getting any experience for them. We're just getting money. Alright, so next quest. Well, Terra, you might as well go after him. He'll be disappointed if you don't. The lady in question is named Yellow Moon. She's a woman with a taste for finer things in life. Safe to say you'll find her getting fitted for something in the Weaver's Guild most every day. Good luck with the inspection, Inspector. I'm not really an inspector. Alright, so here is, uh, here's the etherite up there. So we'll go take that and pop over to the Weaver's Guild and meet this Yellow Moon.
Here we go. My beloved pure heart was unlike any wand you've ever seen. Elegant, refined, the perfect accessory for any cultured woman. You will bring it back to me, won't you? Uh, there's still a brand in the background. A priceless possession callously ripped from the hands of its owner. The lady weeps and the wind bears her sorrow to his ears. What gentleman could hear this clarion call and not beg the honor of champion her cause? What in the world? I swear to you, here and now, I, Hildebrand, agent of inquiry, inspector extraordinaire, shall scour all creation from the deepest pit of the seven hells to the very pinnacle of the heavens for your pure heart. What he said. And you, my fellow servant of justice, I see your instincts are not to be underestimated, having guided you to this fair maiden side. Because, you know, I got info. Now then, Miss Moon, what can you tell us of the theft? Thefts, sir, to be precise. My pure heart was only the most recent item to be taken from me. I'm certain I had it when I left home the other day. After I browsed the latest fashions at Sunsilk and took in a match at the Coliseum, I realized it was gone. So the time and location of the theft are unknown, essential details without which we cannot solve the case. But there is one but logical course of action. Miss Moon, to coax the hidden clues from your memories, we must reenact that fateful day's excursion to Sunsilk Tapestries. So, where... Alright, so back to the steps of Milne. Miss Moon, would you be so kind as to describe your visit in detail on the day in question? Nothing unusual happened, but if you insist. I was pondering whether or not to purchase a new dress when a man approached me and confessed his undying love. <laughs> what sort of man says that to a complete stranger, I ask you? Naturally, I was taken aback. I dropped my purse, in shock, not intentionally, on his foot, and he cried out in pain and fled. If I may be so bold, Miss Moon, that strikes me as a most unusual happening. In any case, it appears to be completely unrelated to the theft. Let us next proceed to the Coliseum and see what you remember. Okay, so now we gotta go this way. Conspicuous crates. Once again, Miss Moon, if you would be so kind as tell us what you remember. Well, like before, nothing unusual happened. I felt like gambling that day and was debating which match to observe when a gladiator approached me from behind and confessed his undying love. Naturally, I was taken aback. I whirled about and struck the man in the face with my purse, in shock, not intentionally. Unfortunately, since I was carrying a tremendous sum of money, my purse weighed about six score ponces, and the blow was enough to render him unconscious. One hundred and twenty ponces? Miss Moon, you are a remarkably strong woman. Which is precisely why you were targeted. Oh, it's so obvious in hindsight. 
The thief bore you a grudge. No, it's more than that. He hated you with a passion. There sure are a lot of giant crates in Ulda. At the Weaver's Guild, at Sun Silk Tapestries, and here too. I didn't see any at the Weaver's Guild. These crates are everywhere, Terra. I wonder what's inside, but I don't see how we can open... Ah, of course! I still have plenty of explosives. Here, why don't you try? It'll be fun. Alright, so now we... blow them up. Wow. A bunch of big men. At the heart of every crime rests a single and saleable truth, reached only by navigating a web of falsehoods and contradictions. Hearken to me now, for as a shepherd leads his flock, I shall guide you to my irrefutable conclusion. A gladiator professes his feelings only to be rejected and physically assaulted in response, wounding his pride as a warrior and man. Resenting her prowess while recognizing his weakness, he carries out a more feasible vengeance. He robs Yellow Moon of her weapon, the Pure Heart. Inspector, we found the Pure Heart. These strange men sneaking around town and wooden crates had it. It's not what you think. We're not thieves. We're devotees. Yellow Moon is our sun and stars. We only wish to keep her safe from harm. And should she replace an item from time to time, we'd collect it for safekeeping. Nothing untoward. So she's got fans. You deviants are behind all the thefts. All this time you've been stalking me? What what nerve? And they're all in yellow. Because she's in yellow. Ah, such unbridled fury. Such righteous indignation. We should be glad to accept the goddess's punishment. Oh my. Goddess devotees. Ah, but of course, that I had you inspect those crates was a stroke of genius indeed. As I was elucidating but a moment ago, these fiends are obviously the ones responsible for the recent rash of weapon thefts, as those thefts were cut out by a single individual, you imbecile. Oh, who's coming to join the party? Lest you've forgotten, the culprit is a duelist. He only claims his victim's weapons after defeating them in single combat. If your powers of observation are as great as you claim, you should have deduced that those buffoons and boxes were incapable of such. Hey, she looks like my twin. Her name is Ellie. I should know, I'm a reporter for the Mithril Eye. My name is Ellie and I've been investigating these incidents for weeks. Inspector Hildebrand, gentleman investigator and agent of inquiry, I presume. You're looking well for a dead man. Would you like to meet one of the duelist victims? I'll introduce you with pleasure. You would be willing to share such precious information with me? Your generosity is commendable, Miss Ellie. May this mark the beginning of a long and beautiful friendship. Yes, yes, very good. The name of the man is... Huh? Where are the bloody hells do you think you're going? I haven't even told you anything yet. Off they go. Doesn't Ellie look just like me? Let's see if I can get a good shot. Of us side by side. Okay, maybe a little bit closer. Hopefully my bow doesn't like get in the way. I'm taller. So we're not quite twins. Let's move the map. Huh. But we're almost like there. Very close. Very similar. She could be like my half sister. Okay, let's pick up the next one. That's so funny. Hi, half-sister. I suppose since you're the imbecile's friend, you intend to help him. 
The man you want to find is an adventurer named Humphrey. At present, he can be found at the Golden Bazaar. With luck, the gold or the good inspector may find his way there by the time you arrive. If not, then so be it. Haha, -ha, I wonder what will happen when he discovers that the victim is a perpetrator as well. Alright, so the Golden Bazaar is north of Camp Drybone, if I recall correctly. If not, then we got a lot of teleporting. Yep, and there is a fate where we're going, but hopefully by the time we get there, the fate will be done. I feel like my chocobo is all zippity doo dah today. Hi, I'm Humphrey, and you are? <sighs> Alas, I've caught up with you. You there, young sir. I am told you are a victim of the marauding duelist. Me, a victim? Haha, -ha, how amusing. You amuse me. True, I was challenged by the duelist not long ago, but where he thought to find a whelp, he found a warrior of light instead. Aye, I defended my honor, my blade. See for yourself. Oh, so he's a tank. You mean you won? That's amazing. Ah, <laughs> well, it was nothing compared to what I faced at Cartnew. Match attack to the right of us, match attack to the left of us, stuck in the middle with Master Lou, we were. Core, he was a dab hand with the old magic he was. I tried to save him, of course, but there is a limit to how much giant beasties a man can. That man is no warrior of light. Tell them, Elazar, tell him how he lost and surrendered a sword that was not his own. Liar, scoundrel, I trusted that bastard with me father's blade. Bid him take it to his smithy for restoration. Even gave him gill to pay for it. Then he comes crawling back, sniveling and begging forgiveness for losing it in a duel. As if that's enough to set things right. Look at me, you bleeding whore son. Look at me. Me flowing golden locks are no more. I've gone bald from the stress and heartbreak. I swear to everything holy that you'll be facing a reckoning if you don't bring her back to me. Uh oh. All right, all right. He beat the shite out of me and took the old man's sword. I used the gill to pay the. Sherber. Again. I can't remember how you pronounce that. I have no idea where he or the sword is. What am I supposed to do, huh? I can't give him what I don't have. Unless unless you help me find the sword. That's what you do, right? Help people? Have you no shame? First you claim a legacy not your own. Then you beg others to help you with problems of your own making. You will refuse this man, won't you, Inspector? No, he's not going to. And what of Elazar's flowing golden locks? How will forsaking young Humphrey help the man he has wronged? We shall begin our search for the sword by questioning the people of the Golden Bazaar. Okay, that boy should be ashamed of himself, robbing poor Elazar of a priceless family heirloom. Just goes to show you you should never trust an adventurer who claims to be a warrior of light. 
Thieves and tricksters, a lot of them. It may not be the most honorable solution, but mayhap you should consider giving Elazar a counterfeit blade. If the deception brings him peace in his final days, would it be so wrong? But I, I'm a warrior of light. Elazar's sword wasn't much to look at, but at least it was authentic. More than a few collectors have been tricked into purchasing counterfeit relics. Uh, one more person all the way over here. Antique swords? Oh, I haven't the foggiest about that. The traveling merchant, Jean Jean Pa, is the one you ought to speak with, assuming he hasn't left. Alright. And he is over here. I'm afraid I have no knowledge of an ancient sword, at least not one, not of one I can guarantee to be authentic. You see, any wares I determined to be of dubious origins, I immediately discard in the spring east of Camp Drybone. So he litters. Although I have no swords for sale at present, I may have disposed of a facsimilar, or facsimile and similar, in design to the one you describe. This presents a quandary. Though I am loath to deceive an honorable man like Elazar, a well-intentioned ruse may put his heart at ease, thus spurring the rejuvenation of his flowing golden locks. We'll we continue to search for the genuine article. Well, if there's a sword that spring, it won't remain there for long. It's one of the most convenient sources of fresh water for the common folk in Camp Drybone. Tis, tis. You should endeavor to be more optimistic, Miss Ellie. Like me, I say we search the spring first before declaring all to be lost. Okay. Might just be easier to teleport to Camp Drybone and head to the east. It occurs to me that I'm not fully recovered from my acclimated injuries. It would not be prudent to immerse my body in water. Not without first coating it with the liberal application of salamander oil, that is. Indeed, on many an occasion, my dearest mother tended my childhood scrapes just so. You understand the importance of physical rehabilitation, yes? Then you can assist me by pouring the oil all over my body. Okay. The body is but an instrument of occasional need of oiling, so come, my friend, come and oil me up. Okay. Ah, this comforting scent, as long as I am a child in her arms. Oh, as though as I am a child in her arms. Quickly now, before it dries, knead the oil into my aching flesh. Alright. Ah, the, the rel, gah, the pain multiplies manifold. Gently now, gently. Okay. Oh gods, oh gods, oh gods. Yes, at last. My muscles slacken and soften. The warmth spreads and the pain becomes pleasure. Uh, okay. Right there, yes. Keep doing that. Just like that. Just like... Yes. 
Now, once more with feeling. Am I supposed to like burst out in song and dance or something? Ah, never before have I received such splendid ministrations. Now then, into the spring. You as well, my good woman. Okay. That was weird. Muddy Pebble. Holy Pot. And a Muddy Bottle. You've been productive. Excellent. May I see what you found? So, worthless bottle, useless rock, irrelevant potsherd. No sign of the sword Jojon Pa mentioned, I see. Ah! What a nasty trip over. Now I'm all wet. What was that anyway? Hmm, did something cause you to... Hey, it's the sword. Once again, my instincts have guided us to our quarry. That I had you search that, that section of the spring was the stroke of... of... And he sneezes. Inspector, it's bad for your health to conduct investigation in those clothes. I'll go to Ulda and fetch you some new ones. How, thought you, how thoughtful of you, Nashu. While you're there, purchase a few bottles of hair tonic for Elazar as well. The newest, most potent blend you can find. Is it not wonderful, my friend? Soon all of Elazar's wo woes will be no more. Soon. Report to Elazar. So we gotta go back up to the Golden Bazaar. I wish that there was like an eighth right over here too. Okay. So I guess he's not there. Gotta be in here. Yep, there he is. As promised, I return to you your father's ancient blade. Aye, it is her. Every chip and scratch is just as I remember. God bless ye, sir. I never expected you to go to such lengths for two strangers without thought of reward. Altruism is a rare trait these days. Tis common enough if you know where to look. A gentleman recognizes the good in every soul and understands that none deserve to be forsaken. <laughs> Spoken like a true gentleman, though your garments beg to differ. Inspector, I brought your change of clothes. I also brought a supply of tonic from this peddler I met in Pearl Lane. Excellent work, Nashu. If you would just bring me that case. Wow. 
Wow. Inspector? Inspector Hildebrand? There appears to be something lodged in my forehead. Could it be a missive from an adoring Myra? <laughs> I love how he's so calm about that. Like, hey, I have this card stuck in my head. Hmm, the author neglected to pen her name. I shall come to claim the collector's blade. Is that supposed to be flattering? No, you. It's supposed to be intimidating. The duelist wrote this. He's daring you to stop him. <laughs> A challenge for me? Ho, oh, at last the curtain rises. Very well. If I am to duel the duelist, I must dress for the occasion. And that guy is still like putting every bottle on his head. <laughs> wow. I, Hildebrand, agent of inquiry, inspector extraordinaire, accept your challenge. He's, he's incredible, so bold, so majestic, just like a warrior of light. No, a gentleman of light. He is exceptionally something. Kor, Inspector Hildebrand, you look amazing. And that hair tonic actually worked. He kind of looks like an old cloud. Hildebrand. That's a beautiful <laughs> shot, the desert. This is far from the strongest of swords. Blue, blue skies on the rolling desert. How much longer must I seek the Blade of Legend? Challenge accepted, my worthy opponent. You shall not claim the blade. With my let us call what it is, genius, I shall bring you to justice. Wait, you wish to duel with weapons, not wits? This bridge hardly seems appropriate for such an epic battle. The three collectors. So that is episode one. The first part of the Hildebrand Mandeville quest. Hey, I know that spear. That's the one I found buried with the pumpkins. The pumpkins sort of remind me of... No, it's gone. Never mind. Alright, so that is the first episode of uh, the Hildebrand Menderville questline. So when we return later on we'll be doing the next one and we'll be doing this until the whole questline is done so this is Zilvs and Zilv tour and i will see you later bye